Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romaine Boss to Caroline High, Taylor Riggs, counting you down to the closing bell, here to help take us beyond the bell. Our global simulcast, joined by Carol Masser and Tim Senevic, bringing together our Bloomberg television, radio, and YouTube audiences. And Carol, uh... 4420 on the S&P 500, not much, but that's going to be good enough for a record high. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really pretty impressive. Uh, but it's interesting that you look at some of the big tech, uh, maybe up maybe up ahead of uh, the big tech earnings, but maybe not as much as some of those other categories. I'm watching old and new. We've got uh, yields, real yields at a record low. And then you've got Bitcoin going above 40,000, Tim, dragging names like MicroStrategy and Coinbase Global up big time Yeah, today. what a move for uh, Bitcoin just in the last 24 hours. Uh, the S&P 500 reaching the highs of the day just minutes ago. But Carol, you put, you know, you're, you put hit the nail on the head with the earnings. That's what it's all about this week. Uh, more than a third of S&P 500 companies are reporting. We're expecting Tesla today. We got Facebook and Amazon later this week. We got Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet uh, tomorrow, Caroline. Yeah, big tech is where it's at. And we're also seeing, of course, some headlines coming that Amazon is denying oh, a City wow. AM report okay. that it will accept Bitcoin this year. City AM being a UK publisher, they're saying they also denied its plans to launch a crypto coin in 2022. Mm. And, and indeed, they said it will continue exploring, though, cryptocurrencies. We know Ooh. why Bitcoin got a bid. It was right. because there was this ongoing narrative that potentially Amazon had put out a jobs posting that they were looking for someone to head up their digital currency and and cryptocurrency and blockchain focus and seemingly that got a little bit well overexcitable but they say they were denying it would seem that they would accept Bitcoin this year remain. All right we'll revisit that and of course keep an eye on Bitcoin still holding right around 39,000 and change here but we want to get you caught up here on the close of equity markets the closing bell you're looking at a Dow Jones Industrial Average up 84 points that's a record high two tenths of a percent the S&P 500 up 11 points that's a record high two tenths of a percent the Nasdaq composite right now holding to a 3.72 point gain on the day that's just barely a fraction uh, higher here on the day. Should that hold uh, here, that would also be a record high. And unfortunately, the Russell 2000 is higher on the day. Not quite a record high, but good enough for about a three-tenths of a percent gain on the day, Carol. Yeah, listen, let's go back to what we heard from Amazon. A spokesperson commenting in an emailed statement saying it will continue exploring cryptocurrencies, but denying it has plans to launch a crypto coin in 2022, denying Earlier reports, CDAM report that it will accept Bitcoin this year. We heard Caroline talking about it. It's why I wanted to mention Bitcoin earlier, you know, going above 40000 for the first time since June. But there was a job posting from the retail giant saying mm. it's looking for a digital currency and blockchain strategy. And so, Caroline, listen, when you have... Amazon saying maybe we're looking into this seriously, that could have been a very big step forward for the cryptocurrency. But it's not totally denying it, right? Saying no, it exactly. will continue to explore cryptocurrencies. And we see Bitcoin therefore still holding up 13%. Maybe I'm in the glass the half faith. full kind of <laughs> perspective well, remain. But it does, it, yeah. you know, yes, funnily Look. enough, a crypto coin perhaps... I mean, that, that felt a stretch at the best of times for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, but there's the idea that they're even looking into it, and you have a company of this size and with that clout, uh, even sort of giving it lip service, I guess that's going to be enough uh, to keep people and keep them tantalized here. And maybe it won't launch it this year, but maybe it'll do it next year. <laughs> like, you really have to read in between the lines, you guys. Yeah, but look, to, to Caroline's point here, I mean, we're still at 38900 uh, for Bitcoin right now. So it has given up some of the gains, but still on the day up more than 12.7%. I tell you what you were waiting for of course, though, is Tesla, which is a company that at one point said it was accepting accepting Bitcoin that does indeed hold it on its balance sheet at the moment. And we're waiting to see how those numbers have indeed impacted their overall profitability. Taylor. Well, yeah, and it was interesting. I mean, Tesla did rally uh, today 2% uh, into the close here. I mean, second biggest point contributor in the S&P 500 after, uh, of course, uh, Amazon Taylor. And you get a really big rally in some of the U.S. tech that we've been talking about, not so much with the Chinese tech, you guys, uh, as you're now looking mm -hmm. at the NASDAQ Golden Dragon Index dropping out to the lowest in 13 months. Really, Carol, this divergence that we've continued to see as we await big tech earnings here in the U.S. Uh, Alicia Levine of BNY Mellon Wealth Management calling it, quote, uninvestable. Mm -hmm. Once you get through some of the fundamentals, but then once you get the politics involved, all, the, the game is over, she Let's, said. We've also talked about Kathy Wood and her ARK Innovation Fund. Uh, specifically, that's her largest ETF. She has been selling those Chinese names. She's down to about one-third of 1% 1 from about an 8% holding in Chinese companies back in February. Yeah. I think it's always important. Like, Watch the money flows. Where is the investment money going? But 
does the pullback to him provide an opportunity at some point? Does somebody say, well, wait a minute, this might be a value? Uh, look, I think that a lot of people who have only been following the markets for a couple of years might see a decline like this and say, wait a second, this seems like an opportunity yeah. to get in. But listen to what Goldman Sachs said about this in a note to clients, quote, even when you think China risk is priced, it can get worse, Roman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I mean, we could talk about fundamentals all we want. I mean, we we're talking to Andy Brown a little bit earlier. This is political. And I think that, you know, you could look, you know, pull out whatever spreadsheet you mm -hmm. want and talk about buying the dip. But this is more of a read right now on Xi Jinping, on the sort of his tightening of power. And of course, uh, how Beijing uh, really views its own economy and its own homegrown companies. If you want to get in front of that freight train, be my guest. But I think you're seeing a lot of people vote with their feet. But Remember, this sell-off started long before today, long before this month. Really, you go back to February, you saw this coming. All right, but I'm going to say I'll see your Andy Brown and raise it because what's interesting is he joined us too. And what's uh -oh. he said? It Did is, he tell you something different? <laughs> no, he's, it is political, but it's also like for something like Tesla, Chinese companies, especially the EV companies, they're being developed very aggressively. And even though China welcome welcome Tesla in at this point, come build a factory. At some point, they might say, you know, we don't need you anymore. And then it becomes fundamental for a company like well, Tesla. Well, I mean, that's a great point, uh, Carol. I mean, we talk about this a lot. The idea mm -hmm. is that they're targeting right now. Chinese companies, but when you start worrying about Tesla and Apple and all these companies, yeah. right. these U.S.-based companies that have huge links now to the Chinese economy here, do, does there come a point here where maybe they have to either capitulate to Beijing or maybe pull out? Who knows? Right. That, that's an extreme scenario. All right. Well, no doubt about it. Andy Brown is popular. All right, Tesla, let's do it. We're waiting for their earnings up 2.2 percent. That's one of my gainers today. Been watching it up ahead of earnings, up for the first day in four, still down about 6 percent so far this year, but up almost 20 percent from that market. March low. We did have a tweet from Elon saying he's going to try for longer lasting replacement batteries, but it's all about earnings today. Hasbro just quickly up 12 and a quarter percent, top in the S&P 500, 52 week high, second quarter just at EPS beat. And also Tesla. we did see a revenue beat. Tesla guys is crossing. Yeah, we are getting Tesla's numbers out like earlier than usual, potentially. So let's d dig into those numbers as it continues to break. But this is a company that, of course, has been having significant focus on its second quarter revenue at $11.96 billion. That's the beat. Adjusted earnings per share coming in ahead of expectations too, $1.45 overall. So this is a free cash flow number of $619 million. The estimate was for a yeah. negative cash flow. Well, so once again, another series of profits being yeah. shown by the company. Of course, we'd had eight in a straight row. And indeed, that cash flow just continuing to turn positive. Yeah, me. Taylor, what do you think about this cash flow number? I mean, 619, yeah. obviously, I mean, uh, you know, go from the estimate of a negative, but not quite as high as what we saw in previous quarters. You're still relatively healthy, though. You just think about when we were, what, two years ago, seeing if this company could even go to the public markets to issue more high yield debt at that time. That's how many concerns there were about some of the free cash flow. So mm -hmm. I think analysts really liking the number when you talk about the sustainability without some of the debt financing, Tim. Uh, these look pr like pretty good numbers as we dig into the press release. Yeah, I'm still digging into it right now. We're seeing that Tesla saying that it still sees 50% average annual growth in deliveries. Right now, shares of Tesla higher in after hours trading off of highs earlier, but still higher by more than 1.8%. Uh, they did rise over 2% post market just after the earnings beat. Uh, the company saying that, as you mentioned, free cash flow at 619 million versus estimates of negative 319.1 million. Second quarter CapEx at 1.5. 5.1 billion uh, estimates were at 1.19 billion, Carol. Well, and it's still, you know, you got to put the market caps in comparison with some of the other automakers. It's oh. a bet on expecting that this is going to be one of the long time, uh, long term plays, oh. I should say, in the auto industry. It's a $633 billion market cap. You know, Ford's got a market cap of 56 yeah. billion. GM, oh, you guys, yeah, look at this. Uh, look at the Bitcoin yeah. related impairment, Carol. $23 oh. million. Dollars. So I'm afraid that. That putting it in its balance sheet sometimes goes up, yes. but clearly we've known in the previous quarter Bitcoin comes down as well. But only 23 million is the impairment, but clearly. Yeah. Uh, remain, yeah. they continue to hold it on their balance sheet. They continue to have exposure. Yeah, the long term growth story is interesting. I think the Bitcoin headline is interesting. Of course, that impairment of 23 million. Also, they're saying that they're shifting production of that mm -hmm. semi truck uh, back to 2022 here. So uh, I guess if you're looking for any negatives here, those would be the two. But again, those seem more short term. And well, if there were any sort of concerns about demand, at least within the U.S. as we bring it back, they say that given strong U.S. demand, all the majority of the Model 3s and the Ys of the production was indeed delivered in North America if it was made in California and Texas remains. There were yeah. some concerns well, about this competition coming online. If you're making them in California and Texas, you're mm -hmm. selling them in North America. One thing, though, that's interesting, you go back a few years ago, and we were always talking about how Tesla was having to tap either the debt market or the equity market to sort of fund these ambitions. Mm -hmm. 
making mm -hmm. it very clear right now that it has the funding, it has the liquidity to sort of fund its quote unquote product roadmap. And that's something that we didn't necessarily hear a couple of years ago. The fact that they have the confidence to say this, I think, is uh, probably what keeps people maybe a little bit more wedded to this, Caroline. I think you're spot on, Romaine, with that, because mm -hmm. I think there was, if you go back to years past when it came to Tesla, uh, Caroline, you know you've covered this company a lot too. I mean, there were a lot of questions about its viability financially, and this is a company, even with the delays, I mean, that is something part of its history. They're also talking about Shanghai and China as well. This is a company that sort of is the epicenter of all our conversations today. We've been talking crypto, we've been talking about China and regulation. They say they experienced minor interruptions due to supply chain challenges and factory upgrades. But overall, production in Shanghai remains strong and their plan roadmap remains the same. They're introducing a standard range version of the Model Y in China and it starts at, well, 276,000 yuan post incentives. They say just a strong U.S. demand, the global average cost optimization, they've completed the transition of the Gigafactory at the primary vehicle export hub. So clearly committed to their Chinese manufacturing, mm -hmm. it feels like at the moment. Too. It, it does, but it's certainly something that analysts and investors are concerned about. Uh, last month, UBS said that Tesla's lead over competing EV, EV makers has already started to shrink in China, and then Deutsche Bank analysts lowered mm -hmm. his second quarter delivery estimate because of softer sales in the country. One thing I'm going to be listening out for on the call is transportation costs, given how much transportation costs have gone up when it, when it comes to shipping, when it comes to containers, because there are only several places in the world where these cars are made. So in order to get them from one place to another, that is costing Tesla likely a lot of money now. And Romain, just to your earlier point, they said that cash has been decreasing because, Carol, they are actually paying down some of that debt and they maintain that they have ample liquidity to fund some of those operations. So indeed, a very different story that we've had before. And I'll just repeat, as I know we've had, they're going to be on track to have that first Model Y vehicles in Berlin and Austin 2021. Yeah, and just to rehash, uh, stocks up almost 3% in the after hours. That's after gaining in the regular session up about 2%. And again, a beat on the top and bottom line. That's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage here on Bloomberg Radio, Bloomberg TV, and YouTube. Watching those Tesla earnings. You'll see us again, same time, same place, tomorrow.